Oh, okay. Yes, uh, welcome to my quickie. I'm going to talk 15 minutes about uh, open source workflow using BPMN 2.0, um, Java, and Camunda BPM. My name is Falco Menge. I'm from Camunda. And uh, to give you a couple of details about us, um, so we're building a BPM platform uh, that's open source on GitHub. And we are a um, Berlin-based um, company with about 20 employees. And proudly can say that we don't have venture capital, so we, we're free to do whatever we want. And what we want to do is to help you with a little bit of a problem. Um, imagine you have uh, some source code that you've written and you need to discuss the software with your business stakeholders. Um, that's usually going to end up in something like that because um, business stakeholders usually don't understand source code too well. So um, that's a typical problem and um, it's also um, bad because business stakeholders of course are the people that bring in the money and in the end pay for your work. So you may want to uh, improve that communication a little bit. And one way to do this is to use BPMN 2.0, which is an international ISO standard. Um, it's managed by the object management group as well. And it's uh, more or less the hottest thing since UML. And um, well, let's not bore you with slides. Let's jump right into um, the code. So this is uh, an Eclipse plugin showing a BPMN 2.0 process model. And um, this little demo process is basically um, yeah, doing some quality assurance for Twitter. So let's have a look at it. First of all, maybe a question into the room. How many of you know BPMN? OK, that's like a quarter, I'd say. Um, then let me give you a quick introduction of how this language works. So the idea is I model something in a graphical way. Um, in this case, we have a start event that says um, it, the process is started with some incoming Twitter message. In that case, not on Twitter, but within our Java system. Um, then there is a, a first task that means um, a user needs to review this tweet. And um, yeah, we can have a look at the configuration down here in the property panel. Um, what I didn't show you here was um, this user task or this the start event already has some kind of form attached to it. And uh, same as uh, the user task, it also has um, some form. So basically, these forms that we are seeing here are JSF pages. They also reside within my Eclipse project. I don't want to go into much details of, of these forms. We'll see them in action in any moment. So assuming that the user um, yeah, reviewed the tweet, then he probably made a decision of uh, either um, he approved it or not. And this decision is saved as a process variable inside the process model. Um, so later on, we can use this process variable to um, yeah, see what he decided. So if we have a look at this gateway here, then we can see that one of these outgoing branches is um, using approved. So that's the name of the variable. And what we see here is a simple Java expression um, using the UEL of Java EE. Um, the other um, path here has a similar expression. It just has a little explanation mark in the beginning, which means that this one is a um, yeah, this is the path that's taken if it has been not approved. And now the real interesting part for Java developers is this task. It's a service task. It's completely automated. And that means the process engine which executes this process model will um, invoke some Java code that's behind. And in this case, uh, we again use an expression to reference a um, CDI bean in this case. So if we have a look at that class, then um, you can see it's a simple Java interface that we need to implement. That one's coming from Camunda. And the only thing you need to do is um, basically implement this execute method. And inside this execute method, you can really do um, yeah, all sorts of Java stuff, uh, whatever you like. Um, that really um, brings the process and any Java code together. Well, and in this case, we are using Twitter API to actually um, submit something to our Twitter, Twitter demo account. Anyway. Um, yeah, there is some other task that uh, works in a similar way. Here we directly reference a fully qualified class name. Um, also, that is possible if you don't want to work with uh, Spring or CDI beans. Yeah, so that's how a simple process looks like. Now let's have a look how this works in execution. With Camunda BPM, you're getting a couple of uh, web tools. Um, one is a task list, which is actually the front end for end users. 
And um, the second is Kamunda Cockpit, which is a monitoring application which we can use to look into these processes. Okay, let's first have a look at our process. Um, so here's the task list. Um, this is an example how an end user interface can look like. Um, that said, 95% of our customers actually build their complete own Java applications to um, manage the tasks and allow people to interact with the process engine. So I want to start this uh, little process, Twitter demo process, and we can see up on start I'm uh, requested to fill out a form with some data. In that case, I provide my email address and also some uh, tweet. And ideally, I use some text so that uh, people recognize where this is coming from. All right. Um, if I now hit the Start button, um, the model that we've just seen is actually instantiated, and we get a running instance of this process. This is something we can look at inside Cockpit. As I said, this is our monitoring application. And it shows me what processes I have deployed inside this engine. And I can see there is the Twitter demo process. And it already has one running instance, which is the one I just started. So if I drill down deeper, I can see this process model and I also see where this instance is currently um, running or waiting. In that case, it's waiting for a user to complete this task. Um, if I drill down further into this instance, I can also see um, some process variables that I have provided. Um, yeah, all the data that I um, entered in the form has been stored in this instance. So now let's click it a little further. Um, in my task list, I can have a look if I can find the task. And one thing about the new task list that's shipping with the next version of Kamunda VPM is you can uh, create own filters to find your tasks more easily. And one filter I've created is the one that exactly shows me all the tweets that need to be reviewed. And um, yeah, I can have a look at what's in here. I already see the content. And in this case, I decided to use an external form, which is an external JSF page. Looks a little simple, but does the job. And you can see it's really like referring to some other web application that hosts the form. Um, in this case, I decide to approve this tweet and continue with the process execution. So that means the moment I hit the Submit button, the process will continue executing. The automated uh, publication on Twitter will happen, and then I can see if it is online. OK, just takes a second. All is pretty fast. Um, and yeah, basically, in the task list, I come back to the list to, call, to work on any other task. And in the cockpit, I could now see that this process instance moved on. Um, actually, after it moved on, it will directly end. So I will need to go to the history view and see what happened there. Um, and now we can see this instance has been continued. It uh, went to the gateway. It took the lower path, um, which ended up in publishing something on Twitter. And then it was successfully ended. And now we can have a look at Twitter. Um, we already have a tweet from Bernd, who just gave a talk in the room next door. and. Um, yeah, here's the one that I just submitted. Um, so interaction works pretty nicely. OK. Um, this is how a simple process can be executed, how it feels like to work with Kamunda BPM. Now I want to showcase a couple of more features that we added into the engine in recent years. Um, so one of them is that you have the possibility to also um, test your processes. Um, so essentially, the process engine has a complete Java API that allows you to work with these models and, and interact with the engine. And um, this allows for pretty nice unit tests to be written. So um, here's a little test example. Hope you can read this. Um, we have some infrastructure in this test case. Um, it's using a so-called process engine rule, which is um, yeah, a bit of infrastructure to boot an engine in memory and really um, get it running. Um, we also have some support for deploying BPMN files. Um, so I tell this method that before the method is executed, it should deploy my Twitter demo process. And then I can interact with the Java API of the engine or even use some um, additional test helper classes that we provide. So the first thing is um, I will also 
um, create some process variables, some data to feed into the instance. And um, this is basically by creating a hash map, putting some stuff inside. And as you can see, um, there is some um, content and an email address uh, similar to what I had just entered in the form in the real application. And then um, I start a new process using the runtime service and the method start process instance by key. I tell it what process I want to start and pass in the variables. And then, um, yeah, I can go on in my unit test and do some meaningful assertions about the process instance. So for instance, I can say um, assert that process instance is started and it's waiting at user task review tweet. So this is a particular task ID of my process model. Uh, and then I can even assert that the task is assigned to a specific user. So um, this is like a fluent API that we de developed for um, pretty simple testing. And well, you can continue that game until the very end to check also that the process is ended and even validate that it took the right path within the model. Okay, so that's one part, basically Java API and unit testing. Another neat thing, if you're not too much in living in the Java world, but maybe use some scripting languages or um, in general other platforms, then we also provide a REST API. And um, this REST API is already used by our own web applications, like the task list and cockpit that I showed. And um, yeah, here's a simple uh, query that I can make against the engine. And if I submit that, I also get the list of, of tasks in a JSON format, which I can display in my own applications pretty easily. Um, and basically, you can do anything with the engine through the REST API as well. So like starting processes, um, continuing execution when a task is completed, and so on. OK. Um, one other interesting feature about our monitoring tool that I quickly want to highlight is um, the possibility to extend it. Um, we discovered that monitoring is a very um, broad topic and there's business people interested in monitoring and technical people. So we decided to give this cockpit a plugin mechanism. And uh, so basically everything you can see in this monitoring tool is already a plugin. And um, there is a pretty cool um, plugin store that we developed in a little hackathon that we made recently which um, basically gives you access to plugins developed by the Kamunda community. And just to show you some of the highlights in here, there's, for instance, some fancy statistics that you can um, integrate and get yeah, your history data analyzed. Or also a um, pretty neat addition is the heat map plugin, which shows the um, frequency in which paths are used in your um, processes. Okay, so far into the demo part, just have some final slides that I want to show. Um, yeah, here's a very quick overview of all the components that Comunda VPM contains. We tackled um, the Eclipse plugin, which is a design time modeling tool. Um, we've seen the engine underneath in, en in action using the REST API as well as the Java APIs. And um, as I said, there is uh, two web apps, the task list and cockpit on top of that. And um, there's also room for your own applications. As I said, most of our customers actually build their own applications in front uh, of the APIs. Um, just some key takeaways. What are the advantages of Kamunda in particular when you think about workflow? Well, um, our main mission is to make really a workflow without pain. That means we have a very neat integration into Java Enterprise as well as Spring. Um, we provide REST APIs and uh, an increasingly powerful scripting language support. So you can even have processes nowadays that uh, don't use Java classes, but, th but things like JavaScript integrated or even Groovy, Scala, whatever runs on the JVM. Um, the engine itself is pretty embeddable. That means you can embed it in any kind of Java environment. Um, if you have some of the popular environments uh, like Java EE, then um, we have ready to run plugins for application servers. It's also very scalable. Um, we have some customers like uh, Zalando, for instance, um, who are really doing uh, all their global order processing using um, Kamunda BPM. And um, yeah, they, as you can see in these numbers down here, they really managed to scale, scale their business model using process automation. So that's uh, a nice showcase how powerful this approach is. 
And uh, with that said, um, I would just ask you to uh, try it out, grab the open source releases from our website, kamunda.org. And um, yeah, uh, we have also a, a stand downstairs in the basement where you can come to us and uh, maybe see some more details of how things work. And we also have these nice little uh, BPMN posters um, that are giving you an overview of the language we are using. Okay, so thank you for your attention and uh, maybe uh, come here for some questions or maybe down at the booth. Thank you. <laughs>